people of YouTube, this is Gray's Guitars. I am Steve Gray. Thank you for watching. We are doing another Don't Buy video. It has been a little while. Today, we're not going to be doing a traditional Don't Buy This Specific Guitar. Today, we're going to be doing a Don't Buy a Guitar with a Floyd Rose. That's right. Floyd Roses are the biggest most annoying, pain in the ass to deal with, and let's be honest, how often do you actually use that wiggle stick? How often do you actually do trim bombs, helicopter noises, crazy wiggles, things along those lines? How long do you actually use it? That's what I thought. Rarely to never unless you are a hair metal band player. That is right, I said what I said. So for starters, stringing a Floyd Rose, Pain in the butt. You can't just push it in there. No, you gotta cut off the ball ends, then you gotta use an Allen wrench to tighten down these keys, and then if you don't do it right, it slips out, or the saddles wear out, the little the little zinc th little zinc block inside your saddles will eventually wear out, and then you gotta replace them. It's not as simple as throwing the string through, turning the tuner, and then you're good to go. The second thing is adjusting the springs in the back. That's right. Every time you restring the guitar to make sure the guitar stays in tune and the Floyd is flush with the body, like this one is right here, you have to open up your back plate, pull out your screwdriver, wiggle each screw until it gets in the perfect spot, then you gotta retune the guitar from the top before locking down the nut, and then typically it's messed up again, so you gotta go back into the back of the guitar, use your screwdriver again, and the cycle continues and continues and continues, and by the time you restring the guitar, there goes 45 minutes of your time. Yeah. Another thing, you can't just pop all the strings off and be hunky-dory, good to go. If you put a different string gauge on here, like you go from 9s to 10s, 10s to 9s, you want to go up to 11s or 12s, forget it. Then you are really messing up the system, you're going to be messing with this guitar for an hour and a half before it actually works. The locking nut. Super annoying. Especially when you want to buy a used guitar nut neck and you see a, a Floyd Rose logging nut because of how much extra wood it takes for this system, you cannot buy a nut to replace this nut. So if you buy a guitar with a Floyd Rose that has this nut pre-installed on it and you don't want to use it, you can't just rip it out and replace it with something else. You have to use what's there, unfortunately. And the metal nuts do wear out. The metal washers, the string locks do wear out. You have to lock the strings down here and then you can't even use your tuners. The second it's in tune, you can't use your tuners anymore. You got to use these stupid little adjustable micro tuners, mini tuners, whatever the fine tuning screws, whatever the heck you want to call them. They are just super aggravating and if you don't have them in the right spot when you initially set up the Floyd Rose in the first place, then you have to Undo the nut, retune the guitar, reset the fine tuners, lock it back down, redo the fine tuners again until everything is perfectly balanced and beautiful. The level of the Floyd Rose also determines your tuning stability 90% of the time. If you're rocking one of those licensed Floyd Rose or a Floyd Rose Special, like in this, the Floyd Rose Special is a little better than that, but if, especially if you have a licensed Floyd Rose, that isn't something like your Schaller, your Goto, you know, that's made out of hardened steel. You've probably got a brass block in there too. GTS makes a halfway decent one. I sold one of those recently in uh, a guitar. Uh, my PV Predator finally sold that. Took forever. We'll get to the selling point in a moment. Um, but unless you have a good one, you're going to have tuning problems. 9 out of 10 if you use it constantly. You're going to be going up, down, up, down. If the springs don't go back exactly where they need to go back to, then your guitar is not going to be in tune for the rest of the song after you just got done doing your -lo 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 fancy shreddy solo. Replacement parts are expensive for Floyds. And especially if you have a licensed Floyd Rose, uh, you know, something that looks more like this, where the screws aren't the same, uh, you know, the bolts aren't exactly the same as an original Floyd Rose, good luck finding replacement parts. You Typically, you have to go out of your way to buy a completely new Floyd Rose because they don't make replacement saddles, replacement springs that'll actually fit your cheaper licensed Floyd Rose guitar, and that is also a giant pain in the buttocks. Uh, Price-wise, they can get really expensive. So, your licensed Floyd Rose, you can get really cheap. You can probably buy a used one off of eBay right now for $20. 
You want to get a real German made one, there goes a couple hundred dollars. You want to get even fancier and go to the steel blocks or the titanium or whatever, you know, the sky's the limit for the prices on some of the original German made ones. Schaller, Goto, even though they're aftermarket, even though they're good, still expensive. Still fairly expensive. Market wise, now we're going to talk to, about the sellability of a guitar with a Floyd Rose. A lot of people, including myself, have learned after having several guitars with a Floyd Rose, I think this is my third one, I want to say, second or third. And we have learned that we don't use the Floyd Rose, we don't utilize it, you know, for our playing style, and we generally want nothing to do with it whatsoever. So what do we do? We put it on our local Craigslist marketplace, we put it, we put it on Facebook marketplace, uh, and then nobody buys it. Took me over two years to sell a guitar that I was asking for $300 for when that, that PV that I sold with the upgrades constantly sold for $400 on eBay use. So I was getting to the point where I was like, all right, I can't get rid of this locally because nobody locally wants to buy this Floyd Rose guitar. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to sell this thing online because it's getting to the point where I want to get this thing out of my room. I'm sick of looking at it. I never play it. It's collecting dust like my Parker is collecting dust. Uh, and I just want to get it out. A lot of people do not and will not buy a guitar because it has a tremolo. Uh, whether it's a Stratocaster, a Floyd Rose, um, a, a Bigsby, um, you know, one of those weird ones that Gibson makes where it looks cool but functionality-wise it's completely garbage. Uh, things along those lines. A lot of people see a tremolo and they instantly think, oh no, I'm not dealing with that. There's springs in the back, there's a locking nut, there's a whammy bar, a wiggle stick if you will. You gotta do, go through all of this nonsense that I already mentioned to tune the stupid thing, um, and then it is just a massive pain in the ass. Now, I will say one positive thing in this video about them. When they're good, they're good. I have only played one guitar. It was a German-made Floyd Rose. It was on a $2,000 guitar in Guitar Center, and it was the one time I questioned myself, maybe I should go back to the Floyd Rose, because that thing played, I wiggled the crap out of it, it stayed in tune beautifully, uh, but at the same time, that was a brand new guitar. Typically, if you are buying a used guitar, such as this, this is a used guitar that I bought, Parker Maxfly PDF 80 or 85, depending on how you look at it, with the Floyd Rose Special, very rare guitar, can't seem to sell it because of the Floyd Rose, but it is an extremely rare guitar. You will not find another one like this, or if you do, uh, you're probably looking at around $800, which I'm not even selling it anywhere near that for. I have it listed locally for $500, and I still can't get rid of the thing, uh, or I just want to trade it. Very light, though. Very light, you know, nice guitar. Um, and, and if it gets to a point, I'm going to block off the Floyd, and I'll just use it if I have to. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that <laughs> if I need to. But when you buy a guitar with a used Floyd especially on the cheaper end, most likely a beginner had it or, you know, intermediate and they used the crap out of it. You know, they wanted to impress their friends, their family members, maybe they were in a band and they were hammering on the wiggle stick as hard as they could for dear life every single day for 20 years. Well, maybe not 20 years, but a long time. So when you buy that guitar, a lot of the parts are worn out. So if you do buy a guitar with a Floyd Rose and it's licensed, as I said, good luck finding used parts because you're going to want to replace the springs, which are probably the easiest thing to replace. You're going to want to replace the saddles. You might need to replace the nut uh, because all of these things wear out over time, even on the USA ones. The only plus side for the USA ones is replacement parts are more readily available. You get a licensed one, you don't really have that much of an option for replacement parts. That is what it is. It sucks, I know. The screws are all different. The saddles may be a little different. Things along those lines. So you get to a point where you're like, well, I'm either going to sell it, uh, or if I do want to deal with this, I'm going to have to go try to find a brand new replacement. Maybe, you know, it's another licensed replacement you get from China or something for like 30 bucks. Uh, and pray that it actually fixes the guitar and actually fits uh, because a lot of the import ones, the routes aren't the same. The only plus side is we have a special 
like a Floyd Rose Special. It is the same exact configuration as the Floyd 1000s that are made in Korea, two German spec, uh, the original Floyd Rose that are made in Germany. Uh, that, that is the only plus side of having a one with a, with a Special. If the Special craps out, there are replacement pieces for it. If you have a licensed one, such as this one, if you look at the screws, I do. I have one replacement saddle on here. You can see that it sticks out differently. The fine tuner is a lot farther down because it can't reach it otherwise. I'm actually probably going to sell this on eBay at some point, or I might keep it for parts, you know, if somebody needs an extra part here and there. But um, I actually broke one of the screws on that, which is why I had to buy a replacement saddle because I broke the screw within the saddle. And the part doesn't fit exactly 100%. So I believe it was my, that's what my G-string, of course it's always the G-string <laughs> on every single guitar that has a problem with tuning. Uh, never really like stayed in tune properly after I replaced that. And I ended up using the GTS, which I, I've shown you those videos too, where I upgraded to the heavy duty brass and steel. Uh, GTS Tremel. If you're looking for a replacement, by all means, but you're probably going to have to route out your guitar a little bit, which was not particularly fun. I had to go in there with a Dremel tool. Uh, my father, actually, I'm lucky enough, he is good with tools. Better than I am with tools, anyway. Uh, I was lucky enough where he went in there to uh, knock out some of the wood so I could actually get that thing to fit. But, especially for beginners, please do not buy a guitar with a Floyd Rose, because you're going to hate it. You're never going to want to play guitar again. And you're just not going to understand the complexity of it until you're 45 minutes deep trying to tune the thing and realize that the tuners up the top don't actually tune the guitar whatsoever when you have a locking nut guitar. So stay away from them, especially if you're beginners. If you have to have one, go with a special. At least you can get replacement parts if you're on a budget. Don't go with a licensed, uh, unless it's, you know, like a Goto Schaller or that GTS I mentioned. Uh, if you can and you can afford it and you really need to have that Floyd Rose, go for the German-made one. Because that is the only one, minus some of the replacement ones, that is actually going to do what it needs to do for a longer period of time than the cheap pot metal zinc ones they make for all of the licensed Floyd Rose. My name is Steve Gray. This is Gray's Guitars. If you're new here, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, leave a like, comment down below what you want me to do for future guitar and music related videos. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.